Eight years ago, Frank Rosenthal was on top of a glamorous world. He was director of operations for Argent Corporation, Alan Glick's four casino empire. He was making $250,000 a year and became known as a big tipper and high roller, a bon vivant who was seen in night spots all over Las Vegas. Now it is different. His job is gone, his wife has left, his battles in the courts are over, and he just may be a man who knows too much. Rosenthal came to Las Vegas in 1974 and was a nationally known odds maker. Along the way, though, he had picked up a two and a half page arrest record, including a conviction for fixing a basketball game. He had been a boyhood friend of Tony Spilatro back in Chicago, where he first learned to gamble. What, what is the attraction for Frank Rosenthal to gambling? I mean, I, not that it sounds, almost sounds like a habit if you start at that point in time, but what, what's the attraction for it? Well, as a young boy, I did enjoy trying to predict the outcome of a sporting event, football or otherwise. I, I think it is something that all of us do. I think if you go to a racetrack, Bob, around the country, I think gaming, I think the need for gaming, the enthusiasm for gaming in this country today is so great. It was this background, though, that turned things sour for Rosenthal in Nevada. In 1976, his gaming license was revoked by what he called a biased commission. Years of legal battles took him to the U.S. Supreme Court, but it didn't get his license back. He then moved over to become entertainment director at the Stardust, a non-gaming position. And to prove he was an entertainer, the Stardust paid for his own television show. A professional gambler who Sports Illustrated has acclaimed as the best football handicapper in America. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Rosenthal. But state gamers who thought Rosenthal's record was an embarrassment to the industry called him in again. They said he was still in a key position but was unsuitable for the job. Rosenthal's case wasn't helped any by findings that while with Argent, he had stood by while $7 million in profits had been skimmed by organized crime. Another series of hearings, another round of court battles, and the same result. We're all so self-righteous. You did find out. You did find out that Frank Rosenthal wasn't lying ab about Harry Reid asking me for a special favor. The chairman had the nerve to call me a liar. Rosenthal is still banned from gaming. Last year, he lost his wife and at the same time split with his old pal Spilatro. He is said to know much about the local mob, but is thought to no longer be of much use to them. How long are you going to fight? I'm going to fight as long as I can stand up, Bob. George Knapp for News Center 8. You will see no pictures of Frank Rosenthal as he looks today in this story. No cameras were allowed during the interview, and reporters had to agree not to discuss his appearance. But in Rosenthal's own words, he is a shaken man. Who did it? Who planted the bomb that ripped his Cadillac to shreds? Rosenthal has no answer to that question, or if he does, he's not saying. One possibility, the one advanced by Metro and the FBI, is that it was a mob hit, a contract put out by the Chicago family and one that could involve his one-time friend, Tony Spilatro. Said Rosenthal, I don't even want to entertain that thought. It would make me very unhappy, very angry. It would be an unhealthy situation for all of us. All I know, he said later, is that it didn't come from the Boy Scouts of America. Why would Spilatro want him dead? Rosenthal replied, only he could say if he had anything to gain by killing me. But the FBI may have thought of a motive. Secret wiretaps revealed that the mob thought Rosenthal's publicized fight for his gaming license was an embarrassment to them. They called him crazy and uncontrollable. Another possibility was mentioned by the lawmen to Rosenthal. They asked about his ex-wife, whose reported relationship with Tony Spilatro contributed to the split between the two men. Rosenthal discounts that possibility, but of his relations with Spilatro, he said, I don't consider him a friend of mine. The question on his mind now is how to protect himself and his family. Rosenthal said both Metro and the FBI offered him protection in return for information about local mob operations. Said Rosenthal, I told them I was not interested, that I had nothing to offer. The odds maker said he pointed no fingers and made no lists of suspects, even though the cops told him the hit man or men would almost certainly try again. Instead, he will rely on his own resources for protection. Will he change his lifestyle? Yes. Will he hire bodyguards? No comment. Will he rely on methods that may be outside of the law? I will do whatever I have to to protect myself and the kids. One question was not asked, but it could prove to be the most telling. Why did Rosenthal open up to reporters? Why this impromptu news conference from a man not known for his accessibility in recent years? Maybe he just wanted to enlighten the public. 
or perhaps he was trying to send a message to someone, to those responsible for the bomb, a message that says, even after all of this, I'm not talking. George Knapp for News Center 8. The tall, willowy ex-showgirl was for years a fixture at the side of her husband, Frank, in the hearing rooms and courts where he fought his futile battle to retain a gaming license. Now she is gone, although the full word on her death may be a long time coming. L.A. homicide detectives say Mrs. Rosenthal was seen on the evening of November 6th walking along Sunset Boulevard when she began to scream for no apparent reason and then lapsed into unconsciousness. She was taken to Cedars Sinai Hospital where she remained in a coma until her death four days later. There was valium in her bloodstream as well as cocaine, but the actual cause of death was listed as a lack of oxygen to the brain. Authorities won't say yet that she died of a drug overdose. That will have to wait for the results of toxicology tests, and that could take a few weeks. Officers now say there are no signs of foul play, even though they first reported that there wasn't enough Valium in her system to have killed her. Mrs. Rosenthal has had drug and alcohol problems before. It was while in an intoxicated state in September 1980 that she threatened to shoot her husband, according to court briefs. That blow up, along with a rumored relationship with reputed mob boss Tony Spilatro, led to the Rosenthal's divorce. Reports also indicate that Mrs. Rosenthal spent time in a Long Beach hospital that specializes in drug problems. One month before Jerry's death, Frank Rosenthal almost lost his life when his car was blown up outside of a local restaurant. At one point, authorities investigated Jerry Rosenthal as a suspect in that bombing. Mr. Rosenthal told reporters that he didn't think his wife was involved, but that some of her L.A. friends might be. Frank Rosenthal called us today to say that he and his children are grief-stricken over Jerry's death. It's a tragedy, he said. The family is in mourning and will be for some time to come. George Knapp for News Center 8. So far, the death of Jerry Rosenthal is being treated as a homicide by Beverly Hills detectives. The cause of death, lack of oxygen to the brain. A small amount of Valium was found in her blood, but detectives say there was too little of the depressant to have caused the death. The willowy blonde, shown here with Frank Rosenthal in 1977, separated from her husband after a bitter blow-up in September 1980. Reports then said that Mrs. Rosenthal threatened to kill her husband and that she was involved with Tony Spilatro. After Jerry removed more than a million dollars in cash and jewelry from the Rosenthal safety deposit box, Frank filed for a divorce. Mrs. Rosenthal's death comes just one month after her ex-husband narrowly escaped serious injury when his car was blown up outside of a Las Vegas restaurant. Two weeks after that, News Center 8 broke the story that Mrs. Rosenthal was being investigated as a suspect in that bombing. At least three of her Las Vegas friends had been questioned. Frank Rosenthal himself had commented on that possibility a few days after the bombing. He told reporters then that he didn't think his ex-wife was involved, even though he wouldn't rule out some of the, quote, people she had been running with. During the interview, Rosenthal admitted that he had a big life insurance policy and hinted that Jerry was the beneficiary. And what does her former husband think about the death? We called Frank Rosenthal at his home tonight, apologizing for calling at the late hour and asked for a comment. I'm not going to discuss this with you, he said. I'm not disturbed. I'm just not going to discuss it with you. George Knapp for News Center 8.